sundry items are given out free, of course, to street traders. The arena is located at the Club Road Junction, Oka, a government house correspondent, EGK Abana fight this report. Speaking, Governor Soludo stated that the arena is a prototype and a model of structures that could be replicated across Anambra City to permanently solve the street trading problem. The governor said that all Anambra women who toil every day trying to make a living for themselves can now treat their wares in a decent and befitting environment. He stressed that the accommodation is free of cost, saying that it is in line with the Afghan motto of be your brother's and sister's keeper, adding that instead of blocking the traffic and keeping the environment untidy, the beneficiaries are now at liberty to keep the environment clean. While commending the managing director of Oka Capital Territory Development Authority ACTA, through which the project was vetted, Governor Soludo revealed that the Odu Ibo market on Icha, among others, are being built into a convenient shopping arena. This is a prototype to solve the problem of street trading. All our women who toil every day trying to make a living for their families with their little bananas, their little fruits, vegetables that they hawk around the streets and so on, all of them will now come here. The accommodation here is free of charge. <laughs> The managing director of Oka Capital Territory Development Authority, Mr. O.C. Onuko, said that the project ties into the vision of Governor Soludo's administration to build well-planned towns, cities and markets, pledging that the state government will continue to do people-oriented projects, touching and changing lives, and called on the beneficiaries to safeguard the project. Over 50 people who were displaced as a result of the end to street trading in the state will benefit from the state government's generosity. Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest Ezadri, Principal Secretary to the Governor, Barista Joaquin Aneto, President General of Anambra State Association of Town Union, Asatu, Barista Titus Abudo, among others, we are in attendance. Anambra governor's wife, Mrs. Nonye Soludo, has explained that the primary consciousness of hygiene in the market begins with traders understanding that they have a major role to play in what people consume. The governor's wife was speaking at a free market, Umudioka, where she continued her ongoing market outrage, explained that a bunch of the responsibility to healthy living falls on the table of those who produce or trade what people eat. Addressing the people, Mrs. Soludo told them to maintain caution in how they store foods, avoid the application of poisonous chemicals in the process, maintain simple personal hygiene practices, keep their surroundings clean and ensure that people around them learn same from them. She noted that healthy living is a simple step to a sound and disease-free society, pointing that if simple rules such as hand washing could be made a culture by traders, a good number of sicknesses would be averted. She further called on the market people to learn the habits of proper waste disposal and to avoid foods that have no organic backgrounds. Mrs. Soludo also preached on intensifying campaigns against drug use among children, the importance of communal child raising and other social vices. Social issues, sorry. Earlier in his remarks, 
the President General of Omodioka Progressives Union, Chief Uchen Namalobi, welcomed the governor's wife to the popular market and disclosed that the healthy living crusade has grown to become a common consciousness among every person in Anambra State. The chairman of Afrigwe Men Market, Mr. Dennis Okwosa, and the woman leader of the market, Mrs. Uju Mbamalo, in their respective remarks, commended the governor's wife for marking out the market for her visit and pledged to lead the culture in the market. To support hygiene culture in the market, Mrs. Toludo donated packs of waste bags, aprons, and buckets for hand washing and disinfectants. The Commissioner for Health and State Coordinator of Healthy Living with Nonya Soludo Initiative, Dr. Afam Obidike, the Managing Director of Anambra Road Traffic Management Agency, Atma Engineer Emeka Okonkwo, the Convener of Women in Governance of Greater, for Greater Anambra, Mrs. Amaka Obi, the Deputy Woman Leader of APGA, Mrs. Chinwe Umeri, among others, were at the event. The federal government and National Assembly has been call, have been called to urgently address the unprecedented excruciating hardship in the country, economic hardship in the country, which is bringing every household to their knees and increasing a high rate of disease and death of Nigerians. The Bishop on the Niger, Right Reverend Owen Mwokolo, made the call during the bishop's charge delivered on the third session of the 32nd Synod of Diocese on the Niger at St. Christopher's Church, Odabo Onicha. Our staff reporter, Ogochiko Orano, is on hand with the details. Bishop Mokolo, who was speaking at the Synod with the theme Christian Stewardship, lamented that prices of essential food items have astronomically risen beyond the reach of average Nigerians, thus causing hunger and starvation to many households in the country. The bishop also expressed concerns over the insecurity situation in the country, where incessant massacre of citizens in their communities continue unabated by lawless armed individuals and groups condemning also the infamous culture of public corruption, which he said is partly responsible for present economic wars in Nigeria. He urged all adult Nigerians to start subsistent farming to meet personal needs and those of their families. This is consistent in the biblical team and every act of worship is an act of service to God and each of us is now responsible for what we do. The bishop appreciated Governor Chukuma Soludo for the invaluable development works he has embarked upon in communities across the state and appealed to him to continue to partner the church in management of primary and post-primary schools returned to the mission. On the Synod theme, Christian Stewardship, Bishop Mokolo stressed that Christian Stewardship is a foundational principle within the Christian faith, emphasizing responsible management and utilization of resources entrusted to Christians by God. Those who spoke positively on the bishop's charge includes the Chief Judge of Anambra State, Justice Onoche Anya Chebelo, Venerable Frank Kubi, Judge of Fogidi Achdi Kimbri, the Post Priest Reverend Kanon Chukuneme, among others. The Christian stewardship, what it actually means to serve God. Serve God with all you have and all you can give. So now this appealing to the leadership to ensure that these things are not taken for granted. The Synod has 637 delegates in attendance, according to the Synod Secretary Venerable John Kwemese, attracted dignitaries, including the Archbishop Province of the Niger, Most Reverend Alexander Ibezin, and Vice Chancellor University of the Niger, Professor Chinedunebo, who spoke extensively on the uniqueness of the university. We are looking at the future and we want to make sure that the University of the Nigeria captures this future and brought to the nation. for ABS News. Nigerian Institute of Food Science and Technology, NIFST, East Central Chapter has held an annual summit to the call on youth to venture into green technologies in food processing. 
The program which took place at the Agriculture Hall, Nandi Azikiwe University, Unizik Oka, was a tent in the series tagged 10th Regional Food Science and Technology Summit, Refos. The summit attracted members of the academic community and students of food sciences and technology in tertiary institutions in Anambra, Enugu, and Ebony State that makes up the East Central Chapter of the Association. Our correspondent Amaka Chibuzo Koye has the details of that report. Food and nutrition security in Nigeria, challenges and prospects. It has the sub team green technologies in food processing for sustainable food security as well as improving nutritional security of processed foods. Declaring the summit open, the acting vice chancellor, Namdia Zikiwe University, Oka, Professor Joseph Ikechebelo, said food security is primary and first step towards securing lives and properties and as such the summit is necessary as it will help to reduce the dependency on imported foods and concentrate on one's produce within the state the vice chancellor who spoke through professor harry obiwosu disclosed that the institution recently laid a foundation of food processing industry as they are aware of their roles in development of any society stating that without sustainable food supply no society can develop without sustainable food supply you cannot have development food security is primary and the first step towards security of lives and property. That is why this conference is very important and that's why the university takes it seriously. In an address of welcome, the chairman of the East Central Chapter of the Institute, Dr. O.J. Kewu, represented by a lecturer in food and science technology at the Federal Polytechnic OCO, Dr. Mrs. Ijome Zelu said that they refused gathered food science and technology scholars and students who through research, innovation and entrepreneurship educate the society best ways to process, preserve and making food available to the common man while drastically reducing waste. We first, as an arm of gathering of different people who studied food science and technology is to process food preserve food, make it available all the time for the common man. On her part, the keynote lecturer, Dr. Ndidi Wuneli, represented by Chinedu Abara, told participants that food processing and preservation is no more a culture, but an industry that innovation can help them improve on. What we tried to, pre uh, to present to them was the opportunities that are in the food landscape. You know, It's easy to get overwhelmed by the challenges that we are currently facing as a country. But understanding that these challenges present business opportunities requiring entrepreneurship for them to to take advantage of it. Professor Gregory Onwaka of Michael Opara University of Agriculture, Umudike, who delivered a paper on the topic Green Technologies in Food Processing for Sustainable Food Security, noted that the adaptation of green technologies in food processing and preservation by individuals and industries guarantees sustainable food security. Leading his voice, the chairman, local organizing committee of the conference, Professor James Obiebuna, noted they want to change the mindset of people who only major in other professions, that there are opportunities in food science and technology discipline, as it is a very important way of transforming food processing and preservation. In their separate speeches, a final year student of University of Nigeria in Soka, Samuel Chibokem, and his counterpart from Enugu State University of Science and Technology, Esu Oloma Anya, promised to internalize the lessons they learned from the summit. The summit came into climax with the presentations of awards to individuals who have distinguished themselves and their works in guaranteeing food safety and sustainability. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, says the DSS and other intelligence agencies played a critical role in safeguarding national security through intelligence gathering and covert operations in the past one year. Our ABS Abuja Bureau Chief, Princess Ekwi Ajide, now reports. George General Buba was speaking 
at the joint press conference under the auspices of the Strategic Communications Interagency Advisory Policy Committee in Abuja, said Office of the National Security Advisor has been the voter in coordinating national security strategies and ensuring synergy among various security agencies. The Strategic Communications Interagency Advisory Policy Committee is coordinated by the Office of the National Security Advisor to serve as the umbrella body for spokespersons of all the Nigerian security and response agencies facilitating unified and strategic communication to highlight the collective activities of their agencies over the past one year. Speaking on behalf of other spokespersons, Major General Edward Gruber said the collaboration has ensured that security operations are comprehensive, strategic and effective, stressing that it will go a long way in countering misinformation and fake news. He listed the 9,303 terrorists that were killed, 6,988 others who included their logistics suppliers and informants that were arrested, and 4,000 641 hostages that were rescued, as well as 1,437 oil tips that were apprehended, and the 91 billion 247 million 52,565 naira that was denied oil tips as part of efforts within the period under review. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has also taken several steps to combat corruption, including the investigation of several politically exposed persons, including former ministers and governors. The agency launched a crackdown on internet clusters and currency records, securing over 50 commissions since the beginning of the administration. Some other spokespersons who defended their works within the period, including that of DSS Dr. Peter Afnanya and that of police Lumunya Adejobi, among others, while reiterating the need for citizen support to their works, gave reasons for doing what they do in Abuja Princess in the Ajide Bottom. Of the Embassy of the State of Palestine in Nigeria, Abdullah Shawesh has appreciated the federal government of Nigeria for taking every, a very clear position in supporting the resolution and the three Palestinian amendments to the World Health Organization's resolution that was adopted last Friday. The ambassador who was interacting with journalists in Abuja is hoping that Nigeria would utilize its full political weight known and respected around the world to secure balance on the international political stage and prevent what he termed jungle law from dominating. According to Shawesh, it is 243 days of Israeli war against the Palestinian people and also 243 calls to the world, whole world to maintain international law and reject the law of the jungle. He said about 55% of all structures in Gaza have been destroyed by the war, as disclosed by a preliminary satellite analysis carried out by the United Nations Satellite Center. The ambassador expressed worries that the Israelis control 88% of the Palestinian water sources in the occupied West Bank and allow the colonists to freely access them without obst obstacles, saying that Israeli colonizer con consumes nine and a half times more water than the Palestinian citizens. It will be recalled that the federal government had last week, through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Yusuf Tuga, condemned in the strongest terms the onslaught on defenseless civilians currently being witnessed in Gaza in the course of the Israeli-Palestine conflict. On the foreign scene, at least nine people have been killed and 33 others injured after a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims in Indian-administered Kashmir tumbled into a ravine after a suspected shooting attack, police said. 
The crash happened near Racy Town in the south of the disputed territory as the bus was returning from a popular Hindu shrine in the area. There was no immediate claim for, of responsibility for the attack. The bus was carrying pilgrims to the base camp of the Hindu temple Mata Vishudevi when it came under attack, Senior Administrative Officer Vishesh Majan said. India's Opposition Congress Party President Malkajan Kaje condemned the gruesome terror attack in a post on social media platform. And on sports news, the Nigeria Olympic Committee has said the annual Olympic Day celebration will be held on June 29 across the country. The Olympic Day is a global event that commemorates the birth of the modern Olympic movement founded by Pierre de Coubertin in 1894. The Secretary General of the NOC, Babatunde Popola, said this year's celebration holds special significance as it precedes the highly anticipated Paris 2024 Olympic Games. World's Aztest 100-meter hurdler Toby Amusa Popola said that NOC had received positive responses from various states and stakeholders, and preparations were well underway for the nationwide celebration. He added that no fewer than 21 states and the Federal Capital Territory have indicated their plans to organize activities for the event. And on that note, we conclude the news for this morning. But remember that you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page, follow us at Anambra Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube at ABS Television Oka on X at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And the main news again, Governor Saludo has commissioned Solution Arena to tackle street trading menace in Anambra State. Bishop Mokolo has urged federal government to address rising economic hardship in Nigeria. Security agencies have showcased achievements in the past one year. And on the foreign scene, we brought you reports that boss attack has killed nine in India. The special message once again, Governor Choko Masaludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's continue to give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya. Good morning and have a beautiful day.